Hey, do you want to shoot instant film, but you're too cool to walk around with a Instax Mini? Or maybe you just don't want to use the plastic lens that comes on this camera? And you also have a medium format camera, such as this Yashica A, just laying around your house. Or maybe it's your grandma's or grandpa's. Maybe you just want to control and have a nice piece of glass, like this glass on this Yashica A. Stick around, because in this video I'm going to show you how to load this Instax Mini Film by Fujifilm on a Yashica A. Hey, my name is Eric and I started this channel so I can talk about tech, travel, photography. Today I want to talk about photography. Specifically, I want to talk about this hack that I found on YouTube. And I just wanted to give it a try so I could show you guys my experience and just kind of share my ideas. Basically, in this hack, you take the Instax Mini Film by Fujifilm and you shoot it with a Yashica A. So that way you can have instant photography. Hold that thought. I'll talk about that in a bit. So I've always wanted to try this hack. I just never had the equipment and now that I do, it's freaking awesome. But there are some trade-offs, so I'm going to give you some pros and cons. I will also give you some extra tips and why I do it. Also if you wait to the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to shoot this instant film on regular film cameras such as this Yashica Electro, so stick around. So let's get started, let's get it. Okay, these are the things you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need instant film. This film is by Fujifilm. It's the Instax Mini version of it. They're like credit card size pictures. You're also going to need an Instax Mini. I have this Mini 9. Really, you just need it for the rollers up here to push the film through the rollers to have it develop it for you. I'll talk about that in a bit. You're also going to need a medium format camera, such as this Yashica A twin lens reflex. It's a nice little camera I picked up. Um, Disclaimer, I've only tried it with this camera. I'm sure you can try it with other medium formats because most of the time that film is for a medium format film. So the dimensions on that camera are gonna be pretty big. Usually you can fit the Instax Mini. You're also gonna need a dark bag, such as this dark bag that I have. All it is, is it's got these two little inlets with your hands in, and on the other side, it's got a hole with a zipper on here. So you can insert your cameras or whatever you wanna put in there, your film. That way you can work on it in the dark. Because if you don't know, film is sensitive to light. And if you didn't know that, I will talk about that in a little bit as well. Okay, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown on the steps. Essentially, you're getting the film out of the cartridge, taking that film, putting it on the back of your camera, closing it up, now you can shoot. So you go ahead, take your shot. Once you've taken your shot, you're gonna take that film out of the back Put the film back into the cartridge, put the cartridge on the back of the Instax Mini, and then cover up the front of it so you don't do a double exposure, unless that's what you're going for, but that's for a whole other video, and you take your shot. And as it rolls through the rollers, it's going to process your film. And that's where you're going to see all the color and contrast come to life within like two minutes. Okay, if you don't know about film, I'm going to give you some tips. I'm going to give you an Instant Film 101, specifically for the Instax Mini Film. So this film is by Fujifilm. Whenever you get it, it comes wrapped in a plastic. Once you open up that plastic, you get a cartridge that looks like this. On the front, you're going to see a dark slide. This dark slide is just here so you don't accidentally expose the other exposures that are in here. And when you first get it, there's going to be... 10 of these exposures in here and as I mentioned earlier these exposures are sensitive to light so all this it has to be done under a dark bag I cannot stress that enough it has to be under a dark bag or in a dark room and the way that this film actually works is the back side is a side that is sensitive to the light the back side is actually facing the lens whenever you take a shot and you hit the shutter button it's gonna open up that shutter let the light in and expose the film and I can actually show you what's going on here with this camera because this actually has a bulb setting where you can pretty much hold down the shutter for as long as you want. We gotta make sure whenever we load this film, it's actually facing the lens. So when the light comes in, it exposes the dark side. When you close this up, it's gonna be sealed tight from all light until you open the shutter. With that being said, all film works this way, even the 35 millimeter that you would put on a regular film camera works the same way. The film gets exposed to light, then you have to take that film to a photo lab and have it get developed. 
However, the cool thing about instant film is that all that is done on the film itself. This is the development. This is where the chemicals are. And whenever you pass it through the rollers, the rollers actually crush the chemicals in there and start the chemical reaction. Also, please be careful whenever you're handling this film because these are chemicals. Try not to crush it to accidentally start the chemical process. So that's why it's instant film. Now I'm gonna give you some tips on how to actually take out the film out of the cartridge. So whenever you load this into Instax, there's these springs right here. And these springs are actually pushing on the back of the film right here. And that's just so that everything is pressed this way so it's easier for it to come out uh, out of the rollers on this side of it. Th there's a little slit here where all the film comes out of it. I usually take my fingers here and I push on the back of here with my thumb I push upwards get it out and you would put the film back in the same way you put it in. You would actually put it through this slit right here. I usually start off with one corner and then put the rest of it down and just try to push it back in there and I usually use my thumb to push it down you should also practice the transitioning practice putting it into the cameras taking it out of the camera putting it back into the cartridge and putting that cartridge back onto the Instax you should do this until you feel comfortable with it and then try it with your eyes closed and then do it in a dark bag one other thing whenever you load it onto the Ishika is to make sure you know what orientation it is. I usually go by feel. I'll use my fingernail to feel the sides. And on the front side, you will feel this border right here. On this other side, you won't feel those borders. So you know what side is which. That way you know how to position the back side facing your lens. Also, you should get a feel on how this is on here. Make sure that whenever you close it, it's secured. Okay, here I'm actually gonna load it but you're not gonna be able to see anything because it's gonna be in a dark bag, so I'm just gonna kind of fast forward it through it. So here I'm gonna open up the one side. I just opened up the fresh new pack, so I'm gonna put it in here, put both cameras in here. Make sure this is on there. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it around so I can put my hands through it, work on it, and I'm just gonna fold it one more time because you never know, you don't want any light to come in. Here. So like I said, I'm just going to get film from the cartridge, put, the, put that film onto the back of the Yashica, and then take a shot. Okay, so here I got the fresh new film in the back of this camera. So now that you have the film loaded in here, you gotta go ahead and take your shot. This camera doesn't have a light meter built into it, so I usually use a app that I have on my phone or I'll use a little light meter that I have. Just remember that the ISO is 800. So now you take your shot. Like I said, I'm gonna use a metering app to get the right exposure. Okay, so I got my settings, now I'm just gonna put it on here. gonna get my focus and I'm gonna take the shot okay now I'm gonna take the film out of here put it back into the cartridge put the cartridge on the back of the instax and then pass it through the roller so I can develop the shot that I just took I'm gonna put this back into the bag close it up turn it around fold it Now I got the film in here and I'm gonna develop it. So like I said earlier, you're gonna wanna put your palm in front of the shutter so that way no extra light comes in. So you just take your shot. And we'll just wait for it to develop. Okay, so I think this is a bad batch because the other one that I took did the same thing, nothing came out. I don't know, if sometimes you get bad batches, that's just instant film. Sometimes you get like imperfections, but that's what makes instant film cool, you get those little, you get those imperfect pictures. Okay, and with that I want to talk about pros and cons. So I'm going to start off with pros. Pros are, you get to shoot with this old school camera, 
you also have a lot of control on your settings so you can actually control the aperture you can control the shutter speed versus on the instax mini it's all automatic which is a good thing but i like to control my settings sometimes just to add my style my photography also you get your pictures in an instant i mean this took like two minutes if it came out right it would have been awesome but this only took like two minutes for it to develop these instant minis are a lot cheaper than the original 120 film that you can shoot on this camera now the cons one of the bad things is that you have control so you can mess things up just like here i don't know what happened here i think i'm pretty sure it's a bad batch this is the second shot that i've taken and it's the same thing it comes out black i don't know what's going on or maybe i just don't have the right settings also you only get one shot so if you're gonna take this out somewhere you're only gonna be able to take one picture unless you take your bag but that's a whole nother thing if you're out and about i don't think you're gonna want to carry around that bag also one other thing this film is really sensitive to light, like super sensitive to light. I, I can't seem to get the right colors or the right contrast whenever it comes to shooting outside in the daylight. Super sensitive. Either I'll blow it out or I'll underexpose it. But that's also the fun part is trying to figure out what the settings are, how to shoot things with instant film. And if you mess it up, oh well, you can take another one. One of the other cons, you're going to get these bars in the top and the bottom. And that's just because this, this doesn't exactly fit the dimensions on the back so keep that in mind overall it's a really fun experiment it's a pretty cool hack to try out if you have all this equipment i recommend you trying it out i guarantee you you're gonna have a lot of fun doing it i love doing it because it gives me an excuse to actually use this camera i haven't actually shot the 120 film on this yet but i plan to eventually for right now i have a lot of these instax mini so i'm gonna just keep shooting instant film plus it's instant you get to see it so that's the reason why i do this because i'm able to control the settings on this camera versus this one you're not really able to do that don't get me wrong this is a really great camera i love this camera it takes really good pictures it does everything automatically for you you don't have to do anything all you got to do is point and shoot and take a shot this is a great camera for a beginner or just anybody who wants to have instant film it's also just fun to shoot instant film if you haven't done it try it i recommend it if you want to see another video of me using this let me know like this video leave a comment subscribe I can also make a video about this camera. I'm probably going to make a video about this camera because I freaking love this camera. And I can't wait to actually shoot the 120 film on this. Hey, so it's not all a fail. I actually took these pictures with this Yashica. So, you waited to the end. I'm going to show you this other little hack. So here I have uh, another Yashica. This is the Electro 35. GSN. It's an awesome camera. It's an awesome camera. I love this camera. I haven't even shot film on it, but I plan to. I can also talk about this camera later on. I'm for sure going to make a video about this. But the cool thing is that the back side of this is actually big enough to host an Instax Mini. So I've actually been shooting film, instant film, with this camera. See, it's a little snug. It's really tight. And I actually took out the pressure plate on here just so it doesn't mess up the chemicals but it works and you can actually shoot it subscribe so you can see that video anyways that's it thanks for watching the video hope you have a good day